always look into the future epicenter of my book. And um, <coughs> I wanted them to develop, a bit like the industrial age. But um, I didn't want them to have steam. And I definitely didn't have the internal combustion engine using all that oil. So I found a chap called Mr. Sterling on the internet. <coughs> he was a Victorian. And he invented something called a Sterling engine. Um, quite a nice little engine. What's nice about it, it has an external power source. The nice thing about the external power source is you can use anything you like. You can use a nuclear source. You can use the sun, which is a nuclear source. You can use oil, you can coal, you can use wood. And if you're British, only if you're British, you're not allowed to do this if you're not British, you can use a hot cup of tea. Now, most people build these things in their workshops with little lathes. You know, they're sort of engineering people who make little engineering things, like steam engines. I um, haven't got anything like that, because my workshop is actually just a shed. It's usually got bikes in it. So I thought, I'm not going to have it in my book if I can't make it, because that's all a bit technical. So I thought I'd have a go at making my own truck. <coughs> so I've made one out of tin cans, plastic bottles, <coughs> some very technical things. Got some carbon fiber rods here. Anyone got carbon fiber rods at home? Yeah? Where do you find carbon fiber rods? I tell you, the easiest place to get carbon. They're quite expensive if you want to buy a carbon fiber rod, but they're very cheap if you find an old kite that's broken. Nearly all the kite rods are carbon. That's what that is. These are bits of carbon fiber for broken kite. <coughs> because you can use any heat source, you can also use any cold source. It's only got a heat difference. I figured in my cold world, I could bury this in the ice and let the sun shine on the top. And there's no clouds in my world. Why? There's no clouds. Because there's no water, there's no water cycle. So although it's icy and cold, it's sunny all the time. Fantastic. So I thought, I'd stick it in the ice, I'd make an engine. I haven't even decided what I'm going to do with it yet, but I needed to know if it would work. Is it working? No. Why is it not working? Same reason your car won't work. Your internal combustion engine won't go on its own. They're not that clever. They need a crank to start them up. If you've seen the old films, they stick in a crank and spend ages getting the car going. Now you have a thing called an electric motor. You need a second motor to get the motor going. So I need to crank it, get it going. There we are. And hopefully, that is an engine. An engine is something that does work. In school, in theory, you should be engines. You should be doing work. Something's going in, something's coming out. Uh, what happens is, there's air in here. As it gets hot, it expands. As it expands, it pushes this little piston up. As it pushes that piston up, it turns the crank round. As the crank goes round, it pushes this big piston down. The air that's at the bottom gets moved to the top. It's the cold plate at the top. The air cools down. It contracts and it sucks this piston down, which moves that back up. So you've got the air getting hot, cold, hot, cold, expanding, contracting, and that's making an engine. What does it do? It doesn't do anything yet. This is just a model. Unlike that, which I've actually used to cook tea on. But it shows a principle, it shows that I can, or you can, or we can, put things into the ice that would make engines that would be environmentally friendly. I think that's something that we could, I could work on, you could work on, so Isaac Newton would have liked to work on, to improve the world in some way. <coughs>